so I'm here at the lovely River Froome, the busy M5. How'd you get a canal under here? So I'm on the missing mile. This is a section of the Cotswold Canal that is, as it might suggest, missing. There's several reasons for this, mainly due to the M5 motorway, which is just across the fields over there. Now we're here to explore it today, as around two weeks ago, I had an email from somebody and they said that there was a planning meeting going on. I didn't know about it. And it was a final decision on whether the rest of this project can go ahead. First off, you have this section there. This is just behind, that's the bridge we were just under. And this section is going to be dredged. Now, at the moment, this is closed just down from here for works because they are working on putting hard standing in so they can do all the dredging from the towpath rather than doing it from a boat. It's much cheaper to do it that way and much easier. This is all going to be cleared all the way down to the river Froome, which is kind of just over in that direction. And then that goes into another lock and out towards Sol Junction. I'm not gonna to go too much further down here because I've covered this on other videos and it's not the reason for today's video. But you can see the compound is starting to take shape. They put this hard standing down and this means, as you can see, diggers and dumpers and stuff can come round here and dig from the bank. You've got the long reach, a greeny bluey excavator up there and the yellow one as well so they can clear all of this you've got occupation bridge there which is in pretty good condition and then you've got the, the um, fuel pipeline which is aviation fuel for the airfields in birmingham that comes from i think it's sharpness or even mouth docks i can't remember which docks which also needs to be moved as well so i was surprised when i put the drone up to see this quite beautiful pattern on the on the ground now these are scrapes now the idea of these is that they create a wetland habitat and i think there's going to be sluices onto the river that are going to be able to fill these up so they can control the amount of water in them and it's part of the cotswold canal connected vision of creating a habitat all the way along the canal now the canal connects these habitats so this will connect to other ones and it creates a massive area for to get a diverse genetic through various different sort of wetland species. So these two bridges here are part of a large roundabout which is kind of just above us. Now they were built as part of the Missing Mile about three or four years ago and they were the first part of what is effectively the Missing Mile from here on towards sort of Dock and Pike Lock which is further up the canal in an area I've covered quite a bit. There's been sort of three years now of wrangling to get this through mainly to do with uh, the Environment Agency and we get into that in a minute to further down. But right now where we're coming, we're, we're becoming underneath. This is going towards Stroud, the direction we're walking. And right here is going to be a lock. And what you can't see is on these roundabouts on the other side, the canal used to follow a different route. And it followed the line of the road, which we'll visit in a second, across there. So there was once Bristol Road Bridge and lock just on the other side there. So this is a replacement to bring the lock back to its original sort of height. There is also gonna be another lock further down, which again, we'll get to soon. This then leads into a mooring basin. Now this dig here is nothing to do with the canal. This is, this was archeological, but what you're gonna have here is a visitor center. You're gonna have moorings, you're gonna have uh, a calf and you're going to have a uh, an apartment above the above the main building which will house the sort of the manager of, of the complex and if we walk further up in a second i'll show you the old routes you can really see all the sort of test pits they've done here everywhere to sort of check all of this i'm not too sure what they were looking for but they uh they spent a bit of time here and they've sort of cleared the top layer off and then done the usual pits so the canal is going to go across from that corner there and work its way over towards the M5. So we're just on the edge of that sort of mooring basin there. And through this kitchen gate, and we're on to the A419. Now the canal used to run straight through there. And just on the end there, you might see a red and black car and white van. That's where the roundabout is where we started this video. And the canal will run across here and then at an angle across the fields there. So you can kind of see how this has been excavated. You've got the roundabout over there, the lock, 
and then you've got the kind of quite square shape and then coming round so this will be the kind of way out of the little uh, mooring basin through here and then directly across towards the River Froome again. And the River Froome is taking quite a big role in the future of this canal due to the M5 just over there. It's going to be prohibitively expensive to actually build a new cut underneath the, underneath the motorway. Behind me here we have the River Froome and across these fields here is where the canal is going to run. We came from all the way over there the canal is going to come you might be able to see the concrete in the distance. The canal is going to come across here roughly kind of in between these trees here and then it's going to come down to the M5. Now the M5 was built in the late 60s and early 70s in a time where nobody cared about canals they were just a dirty ditch and a stain on the local planning that needed to be erased and it wasn't until the 70s when sort of canal restoration really started to, to take off and the Cotswold Canal Trust uh, was formed in 1972 and it was formed by a chap called Michael Ayland I hope I pronounced that right and there was a road being built uh, I believe it was and they were going to build on the entire route but the problem is the M5 had already been built and you can see right now how low we are here to, to the motorway this only just clears this river if they dropped into the river and followed the course of the river which a lot of canals do now they would never get head height underneath for any boats so the plan is to come down to here and then drop obviously with locks lower and you're going to be lower than the river level you're going to come into a trough then on this side of the river and it's going to be lower than the height of the river with a wall in and you're going to go through the middle there i'm not even going to attempt to walk under that not a chance but that does create one problem you're going to lose your towpath you can't really get a towpath through there it's it's narrow enough as it is and this is where all the issues that come from with the environment agency all the three years of planning and messing around probably longer than that behind the scenes has been because they had to prove that this wasn't going to become an issue with flooding and 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 all that lot and the river flows here being restricted by the width of the canal tunnel and with a canal trough causing issues on the other side stopping the water being able to flow through causing a backup on the other side so where are all the walkers the cyclists the horse riders all the other users of the canal going to go you know these days canals aren't just about the boats that are going to be using them it's going to be it's all about everyone the well-being the health and well-being benefits of people being able to walk and cycle the canal and get out in the beautiful british countryside and fresh air he says with a motorway behind him. So let's hop over and we get back on the old route and we see where we can go. So if you look at waterway routes now, we are right here. You've got the old canal used to run across there, back up to the road where we were a minute ago. And that is here. So it ran across the corner of that council depot and then ran through approximately here just in front of us now when they built the m5 they were put in a tunnel for the farmer it's kind of like a cow drive so this is a tunnel now this is going to be the towpath we're kind of a field across from where we just were over there and uh, this is quite nasty at the moment as you can probably hear it sticking i apologize if the light's really bad on this as well this isn't my usual camera i usually use a 360 camera i drove all the way up here and realized that my selfie stick which is the only one that fits it because it's got it needs a longer bit on it is still at home so i am using just a flat camera today which is unusual i can see some harris fencing now now the canal obviously would have ran straight ahead of us here but what you're going to see in a second is a lot of digging and that is the new football pitches for forest green rovers the training ground the stadium's going across the other side so if you look across there just a bit further over from the greenery and the guys in the yellow suits there's west hill bridge and that is west hill bridge and lock which is now john robertson lock after uh, the guy who left a lot of money in, the, in his will for the trust to build it so here we are on the other side of the m5 uh, we've only walked from that little hedge line over there you can see the spoil heats behind on the other side this is where the canal is going to come back through and then it's going to follow around these fields here and pretty much follow the course of the river around and back up to the lock 
So let's jump up to John Robinson now and see what we can see. So this is John Robinson Lock, formerly Westfield Lock. Now you can see loads of clearance has been done here. We'll get to that in a second, why it's been cleared, kind of all that. When we started down here a year ago, this was all bramble. First day was here clearing that out, while this was all being dug out. There was a digger on the side here, dumper trucks running right round to take you to the spoil heap where all the spoil was dumped. And then you had eventually, as that was dug out on that side, managed to get a, basically a track into here and dig out through here and round. So that is the old line of the canal directly in front of us. And if you look further up ahead, you may or may not be able to see the, the cars and the lorries going across through the gap in the trees. That is that tunnel we walked through. That's the uh, cow tunnel. So the football pitches are just there. That can no longer be used. Not just because of the football pitches, but because of the height of getting underneath the motorway, as, as I described further back. So, the canal is now going to go across and turn here. You're going to have a wide area here for turning, so you can swing a boat round. If you know about steering a boat, you steer from the back, so it's quite a swing to get a boat around. And then there's going to be a lock down here somewhere, and then follows the river round to the river goes under the motorway just over there. So that's a new line. Now, well, there's problems with all of this. Originally, this was supposed to be all funded mainly by national lottery grants. So there was uh, something like a 20 million pound fund. It's the biggest fund ever in the southwest of England to be given heritage fund. But because of various things, COVID, the Ukraine war, uh, you know, the cost of uh, everything really, the materials have all gone up, inflation's gone through the roof. It's now going to cost about another 10 million. I think the total is about 35 million for this project. Uh, some was funded from elsewhere, obviously. So the trusts are now looking at ways to kind of get this price down. And one of these options is to get volunteers to dig this rather than having contractors in with diggers. They want it done in about five years. They need two things. They need, they need some money. So there will be a link to the Cotswold Canal Trust below where you can go and put donations and they need more volunteers. So if you live locally or even don't mind traveling down here, please do get in touch with the trust and see if you can help out. Can you imagine how cool it would be? I'm a tradesman, right? And I regularly drive past houses with friends, family, my wife, the kids in the car and I'll be like, I work there, I did that, I work there, I work there, I work there. Imagine coming for a walk with your family or hiring a boat living on a boat if you live on a boat and sailing along and saying i dug this you won't beat that will you how cool would that be so get involved and help turn things like this into reality now let's have a little look down so i don't really want to say too much about this lock because it's something i've covered a lot but one thing that has happened down here is other than the clearance work which was done by another wrg work party recently and i think volunteers have been doing it as well are the coping stones. Now the coping stones weren't there last time I was here. They were still doing the brickwork. So this for the first time is really starting to look like a lock. The WRG groups from KSCRG to like the Newbury groups and all over the country, people come here, they give up weeks, they give up weekends, they give up loads of time for free to come and do this. Actually they pay for the privilege because they've got to pay to come down and stay when they're down here. So a massive thank you to all the hard work by all the volunteers, not just the Cotswold Canal Trust volunteers, they do an amazing job, but for the nationals as well who cover the whole country. So just here is the top of the lock and this is in the way. So this is a stream, this never used to run down here. So this used to run into the canal a bit further up and there's a spillway we'll visit in a minute which used to take it then across the field that way but there were major issues with flooding so when the canal was abandoned they diverted it around here and out to the river from a different way now this was all quite overgrown here and this has been cleared obviously time of the year it has to be done before now because of the uh, nesting seasons so now the lock is going to come through here there's going to be a culvert under here it's not an aqueduct it's a culvert thanks for Ian Williamson for pointing that out for me that is then going to take the canal over this stream and on towards Docklock up there. And this has also been cleared massively as well down here. So you couldn't see any of this before. This was well overgrown. I came with Paul Whitewick and Rebecca and they did a video on this spillway here, which is very good. And we were trying to figure it out because it's got three different heights on it. And uh, we never really did figure out what it was. I think it's less complicated than what you think it is, but it's a beautiful structure. And that takes the canal up into 
what is the old company headquarters and dock lock up ahead. So this is dock lock. This has had a lot of work done in the past, but I have never seen this staircase before up on the side of the lock there. So this has had quite a bit done since I was here last. All of this was really overgrown before. So there's been loads of clearance work done, excellent work by the volunteers. Unfortunately, I can't cover this little section in between, but I will jump over to show you the end of the missing mile in a second. But they're currently catching voles at the top. Uh, they need to remove the voles to be able to do the work further up. Now, it's quite a good problem to have with voles because obviously voles are something that are being reintroduced and have disappeared largely from this country. So to, to have them here and be able to trap them and remove them and, and put them to a safe place is excellent. So this gets its name from the fact that it used to have a dry dock here. I've never really sort of got a confirmation of where it was. Some literature says it was actually down here and it was underneath the lock, which doesn't make sense because you've then got to pump the water out. But there is a cut out at the top there. I think there used to be an icebreaker up here and I believe there was a dry dock at the top there. I think that's where it was anyway. So one thing you may have noticed when I was putting maps up, West Hill Bridge that we've just been to was the towpath stays on this side of the canal. Normally when you find a bridge, it's because the towpath crosses and that'd be some reason for the original landowner didn't want you to go through his land or, or whatever. And then it doesn't actually cross until we get to dock lock, which we'll get to very shortly. Now, there's several reasons that that could be. One is the obvious answer, that there's farms with land across each side, so that they need to be able to get tractors and stuff across. And it is quite a substantial bridge. But one story I did hear, that it was built, so the people who lived in Whitminster, just over there, could access this church over here. I love a church. I love any building, actually. In fact, a lot of the mosques, synagogues, everything, if you look at them, they are absolutely beautiful buildings. I love history and I love engineering. I love architecture and what a church this is. It's lovely. I'm just going to see if we can actually go. Most churches are open most of the time. So. Yep. Ah, very nice. Look at it. We don't build things like this anymore. There's very few people, stonemasons, that are actually sort of doing this on new projects. It's absolutely beautiful. So we're on Pike Bridge now, and we've got the Western Depot just behind us here. And this is where they're laying the traps. And I believe that is one just floating in the water there. So they'll leave these down for a day or two. I think they'll be coming back uh, and they trap the voles in there and, and then move them up. So this is pipe lock. This was uh, finished last year up until about, I think it was about around September, October time. This was full of scaffold. So they've done all the wall repairs, coping stones, uh, got it all ready for the gates to go in, which are currently out for tender. You can see where all the brickwork repairs were and it looks like that's quite, been quite extensively repaired. But it's just ready for gates. That's all that's needed on here. Two gates, top and bottom. They're not cheap on this canal because they're so big. This is uh, used to carry seagoing vessels. So it wasn't just a case of a narrow uh, gate. It was, uh, you know, they're, they're, I think like 15 foot wide, these uh, locks. So they've just got to stop planks in there. And that's obviously overflown now, as well as down through here. We've had a lot of rain, so it'll be running harder than usual. A little slipway here as well. And then you've got this whole barge. Now, I believe this was the first of the mud boats that the Cotswold Canals had. I'm not sure whether it's been put up here as a permanent sort of statue to all the work that it did or whether it's one day going to be repaired. So that is the update on the planning application that's gone in and the fact that it's now all going ahead. Like I said, they need a bit more money, so please do have a look, make a donation, give some time, whatever you can afford or do. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.